Coming up, the brain and how it functions. A reading from the book Mumnesia by Katie Dale and memory games and brain training to help you expand your mind. In today's video, we're talking about the most ingenious thing that we possess. It's right in here. We've all got one and we couldn't function without it. We're talking about this. It's the brain. Now, the brain of a human being is so unique. We're the only animals that have managed to make things to such an extent that we have medicines that can cure us. We have planes and cars that we can travel in. Our brains are capable of so much and they're the most important part of us. The brain is like the central computer in your body. Without your brain, you'd be nothing, just a shell, essentially, because your brain does all your thinking and it controls all the different parts of your body. And so I, I thought it might be nice for us to get to know our brains. So let's take a look inside. Well, our brain is responsible for so much stuff, as I already mentioned. The front part of your brain controls your thinking, then over here, your movement, feeling, seeing, hearing, balance so that you don't fall over, and of course, memories and remembering. It's all happening in your brain. And your brain sends messages down through your brainstem into your spinal cord, which goes to your nervous system in your body, telling your body what to do, and then your body parts send messages back to the brain. So let's take a look at the parts of the brain in more detail. A brain sort of looks like a squidgy, wiggly, kind of a bit like a cauliflower, a squidgy, wiggly, round thing. And it's the size of two of your fists put together. Basically, this bit at the top is the most important bit. That's the cerebrum. It's the thinking part of your brain. Then over here, we've got the hypothalamus. Now that controls your temperature. Everybody should have an ideal body temperature of about 37 degrees. And so if that's not the case, for instance, if you're hot, your hypothalamus will send signals to your body to sweat to cool you off. And if you're cold, your little hairs on your body will stand up to try and sort of grab heat and hold it in. So when you've been cold before, you might have noticed you've got goosebumps and hairs standing up on your arms. Your pituitary gland, um, which is this little thing here, controls growth. So, you know, without it, you wouldn't get bigger, for instance. It releases hormones um, and your body can grow, especially in puberty, when and you make the transition into becoming a man or a woman. Um, this is the brain stem, which keeps you breathing. So that's a pretty important part. Then over here, the spinal cord is down there and it goes right the way down your back to your nervous system, sending electrical messages, um, telling your muscles and your body parts what to do and how to move. Over here, we have the cerebellum, which makes sure that you're balanced so that you don't fall over. And there are the main parts of the brain. Let's take a look in more detail. The cerebrum is the biggest part of your brain. It's kind of wrinkly and a pinkish gray color. You might have heard of gray matter and white matter. Well, the gray matter is all the bits of the cerebrum and the white matter is all the bits in the cerebrum linking the gray matter. It's thought that the right side brain controls things that are more abstract like colors and numbers and shapes, whereas the left side controls things that are more analytical like maths and logic and speech. We're not totally sure about that, but one thing we do know is that the right side of the cerebrum controls the left side of the body and the left side controls the right side of the body. The cerebrum is a massively important part of our brain. You've probably heard of the lobes of the brain. Well, here they are, all four of them. Over here, that's the parietal lobe. That's to do with your feelings and taste, touch, your senses. There's hearing in there as well. The frontal lobe is all to do with thinking. So problem solving, for instance, if you're doing real maths homework and reasoning, working out that to do your maths homework now, you can have time to play later. It's also to do with attention, the frontal lobe. Um, speech is in there as well. Decision making, planning and smell is governed by the frontal lobe. Then the temporal lobe here is memory and emotion. And then that's your occipital lobe, which is all to do with vision.
There are two types of movement. Involuntary movement, like if I did that and recoiled in horror, and voluntary movement, like for instance, if I was dancing. Um, the movement that is voluntary is governed by the frontal lobe. So anything that you're doing on purpose. Cerebellum helps with involuntary movement. The cerebellum is at the back, it's smaller than the cerebrum and it controls your balance, um, your coordination and also movement, so how your muscles work together. Um, there are motor signals that are sent up from your nervous system into the cerebellum, which means that you can learn to do things with motor movements like riding a bike, for instance, such that you do it without even thinking about it after a while. And that's muscle memory. Then there's the brainstem. The brainstem over here is in charge of all the functions your body needs to stay alive. All the involuntary stuff, such as breathing and making sure you digest your food and keeping your heart beating. It's also responsible for sending all the messages from your brain down the spinal cord to your body and receiving all the messages that come back up from your body. It's a bit like your brain's secretary. Your brain is even active when you're sleeping. The whole thing keeps going. This bit called the limbic cortex, um, which is responsible for emotions, including a bit called the amygdala, which is responsible for fear, help you to dream at night, even when you're sleeping. And another crazy thing is, did you know that when you get old, your brain starts to shrink? Yep, it gets smaller. And what about amnesia? Have you heard of that before? Where people encounter memory loss. I think. Well, amnesia features in the book I'm reading from today. In it, Lucy's mum, Sharon, gets a bout of mumnesia. Mumnesia by Katie Dale. Chapter 5. Lucy. What's happened? What's wrong? My heart beats fast as I spin round to find mum's favourite plant pot smashed at her feet. Orchid and wood chips strewn all over the carpet. Is, is this a joke? She stammers, her face deathly pale as she pulls my calendar off the wall. What, what's the date? Monday the, I don't know, 14th of October? You've got the calendar. So this, this is this year's calendar. Mum thrusts it under my nose. Uh, yes, I say, taking it. Why would I have a calendar for any other year? Weird. And why isn't she at all bothered about the broken pot? Uber weird. Oh, my giddy, giddy aunt. Her hands fly to her cheeks. How has this happened? What? What's happened? I scan the calendar anxiously. But there's not even anything marked on it for today. Have we missed something important? Only about 30 years, Mum's face crumples. She looks as if she's on the verge of tears. What? Fear flutters in my stomach. What are you talking about? You won't believe me. She shakes her head. I don't believe me. Oh my goodness, how did I get here? And why here? Why now? A cold shiver runs down my spine as I watch my always calm always in control mother, lurch wildly around the room, staring at my stuff as if she's never seen any of it before. Look, just, just calm down, okay? I beg, you're starting to freak me out. I'm freaking out, she squeals. But why? Because I've travelled through time. She looks at me, her eyes wild and confused then suddenly bursts out laughing. Is this a joke? I say uncertainly, because I don't get it. No, she insists. It's not a joke. Yesterday, when I went to bed, it was 1985. And now, I'm in the future. This is awesome! She gazes around the room. Is that a television? It's enormous! OMG, she's finally flipped. And what's this? She picks up a DVD case from the floor. X-Men? Um, I have no idea how that got there. I lie automatically. Kimmy must have lent me the wrong movie by accident. It's a movie? Her eyes widen as she pops the disc out. Cool. Cool? My heart pounds in my ears. 
Mum absolutely hates superhero films. She says they're mindless, violent fantasies. Who are you and what have you done with my mother? I'm so sorry, she cries. I thought you knew. I'm Sharon Miller. Nice to meet you. She shakes my hand. But I don't know where your mother is. Sorry. I just got here. What? My mind feels like it's about to explode. Is she having a nervous breakdown? What should I do? She gazes intently at the DVD. Totally space age. Can I take one back with me? Back? Yeah, I mean, if I can take stuff. I don't know how time travel works. <laughs> she laughs. My science teacher said we couldn't, or was it shouldn't, travel through time because of the danger of creating rifts in space-time thingamajiggy. So he'd totally flip out if I brought this into school. School? I stare at my middle-aged mother. How old are you? She straightens her shoulders. Twelve. My eyebrows shoot upward. Twelve? She nods. Why? How old are you? Suddenly, all my panic turns to rage. Oh, I get it. This is some kind of twisted role play to show me how immature I am. Nice one, Mum. Funny not. I snatch the DVD off her and shove it into my school bag, my cheeks burning. I can't believe I fell for that. Wait, she says quietly. You're my, my daughter? According to my birth certificate, I scowl, yanking the zip closed. Oh my, something in her voice makes me turn. For real, she says all colour draining from her face. My heart skips. If she's acting, she deserves a flipping Oscar. Mum, seriously, I swallow hard. And my voice is barely a whisper when I say, are you okay? No, she shakes her head frantically. I'm not supposed to travel within my own timeline. What about the space-time thingamajiggy? O-M-G. She really, truly thinks she's time-travelled. I bite my lip. Is that even possible? I try to remember what we learnt in physics. If only I'd paid more attention. I mean, of all places to time-travel to. Of all the people to meet. Mum clasps my hand. I can't believe you're my daughter. But how did you recognise me? My jaw drops. Of course, you must have seen old photos, she smiles suddenly. Dad's always got his Polaroid camera out. It's like so embarrassing. Um, it's not from photos, I say slowly. She frowns. Then how? I take a deep breath, then lead her to my wardrobe with its full length mirror. Chapter 6, Sharon. A blood-curdling scream rips from my throat. What's happened to me? I back away from the mirror in horror. I'm old, majorly old, like at least 25. The girl snorts. And the rest. I'm, I must have somehow transported into the body of my future self. I frown at my ancient reflection, then gasp in disgust as my forehead creases into a million lines. Gross! I've got wrinkles! I wail, trying to smooth them out with my fingers. And grey roots. The girl nods. I've been telling you to dye them for ages. Why didn't I? It's like you stopped caring ever since da... She stopped suddenly. Since what? Since you dyed it the first time, she says quickly. I shake my head, still struggling to take it all in. I can't believe just yesterday I was 12 years old, totally flat-chested, praying for my spots to clear up. And now, well, I've got boobs at least. And the spots are gone, but there are big bags under my eyes. Wrinkles everywhere and, ugh, saggy skin beneath my chin. I prod it and it wobbles. Gross. This is so freaky, I squeal. Like that movie, Freaky Friday. Yeah, the girl nods, except unlike Lindsay Lohan, I haven't changed too. Thank goodness. Who? I ask. Lindsay Lohan, she repeats. The daughter. You mean Jodie Foster? Who? 
She frowns, twirling a strand of hair around her finger, just like I do. And suddenly I can't help but smile. She's my future daughter. How incredible is that? It's even more unbelievable than travelling through time. So, like, what's your name? I ask shyly. It seems like a crazy question to ask my own daughter. But wait! I snap my fingers. Lucy! She stares at me, then nods. Then her eyes narrow. Is this all fake, Mum? No, I insist. I promise. Then how would you know? It's my favourite girl's name, I explain. Ever since I read The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Lucy smiles nervously and sits down on the bed. That's my favourite book. Me too, I cry, plonking myself down next to her. And please, call me Shazza. Mum sounds so old. Shazza, she splutters. I nod. That's what my friends call me. I hate the name Sharon. Okay, pleased to meet you, Shazza. Lucy smiles shyly. Pleased to meet you too, Lucy, I beam. How weird would that be if your mum suddenly turned into a 12-year-old but in her regular body? Very surreal indeed. Now, as I mentioned before, the brain can do lots of strange things like dreaming. There's a thing called deja vu where you think something's happened already. And also, people's brains seem to get more forgetful after they have children. Uh, there's a thing called baby brain, which means that often you're just not as sharp and on it as before you've had children. I'm sure you might have noticed your parents being more forgetful and muddled up than you. There's loads of great things you can do to improve your memory. Brain training, for instance, lots of people do stuff like crossword puzzles and Sudoku. But I'm going to show you a few fun games that you might want to try at home. Pick up pairs. Each player gets to flip two cards over on their turn. You must remember where all the different cards are laid out as much as possible. If you manage to match two cards on your turn, then you get to keep them. The player with the most cards matched is the winner. Yay! The list game. On your turn, state what you bought at the shops. I went to the shops and bought a carrot. The next player then says, I went to the shops and bought a carrot and adds something to the list. A carrot and a potato. Next player. I went to the shops and bought a carrot and a potato and ice cream. And so the list goes on and on. The first person to forget the order of items in the list is out. The tray game. Get a plate or a tray and put lots of objects on it. Have a look at this plate. See if you can memorise everything that's on it. Can you spot what has gone missing from off the plate? It's the battery. A good way to remember things is by mind mapping. Mind mapping is when it's easier to visualise something than just listening to words. For instance, if I said to you, the front of the brain is the frontal lobe where you think and then further back movement is controlled and then you've got the sensors a bit further and then at the very back of their sight and then somewhere in the middle part at the bottom of the cerebrum that's where emotions are and remembering long-term memory short-term memory it can be a lot to take in whereas if i show you a diagram sometimes it's easier to remember a diagram with visuals and little pictures even something with arrows set out clearly is a lot easier to remember than copious bits of information, and that's called mind mapping. Mnemonics. Here's a good way to remember lists. For instance, the planets Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and of course Pluto is a dwarf planet. Take the first letter of each thing in your list and come up with a phrase that has those letters. My very easy method just speeds up naming planets and you'll never forget the planet order again. Clever, eh? Hope you enjoyed learning about the brain and maybe try out some of those games and memory techniques. But for now, see you next time. Spread the word and please subscribe. Bye.